What's going on here? Looks like this is not my channel. Hey, what's up? My name is Adrian Adipagentny from Hit The Road Music Studio. Good to see you here. Hit The Road Music Studio means a home studio on four wheels. We live in this beautiful, beautiful camping car, uh, fully equipped with microphones, two audio interfaces. We have a good laptop here, a bunch of XLR cables. Yeah, we travel the world, record bands that we meet on our journey, wherever they are hidden, if they are in the desert of Morocco, in the mountains, when they're in Berlin and play some rock and roll, it doesn't matter. We find you, we make a nice music video and show it to the world. The idea behind it is to show how beautiful this planet is. Diversity is a gift and each one is different, but we are all equal. And this is my personal way to combine audio engineering and my passion for traveling and to discover new cultures and share this beautiful experience with the world. I think we all can learn from each other on every corner of this planet and this exchange can help for a better understanding. So this is the idea. We just travel the world. We stay with the people in the places where we record. So we stay, for example, two months in the desert and really learn about the culture. We learn a little bit of the language, you know, the eating habits, the music, the roots of the music, where it comes from. This is what we are sharing here. We will make a new video series. Um, I talked I talk with Warren about it. And we will present you bands that we recorded on our journey. And basically, you will get an interview with the artist about their background, how it was to work together. I will show you a lot of behind the scenes material. And we will go also technically here, where we jump into the mix, which mics I used, why I used them, a little bit more about the recording situation. Because we are recording always in changing places. So it's important to calculate the room reverb, um, how to work with bleed. All of our recordings are made live, sometimes with overdubs of the vocals and backing vocals and some percussive elements. And yeah, I love to share more about this process with you and maybe even motivate you to start your own project like this because it's a lot of fun. By the way, we prepared something very beautiful for you. There will be 15 tutorials available on Promix Academy where I show you in depth how we met the band, recorded them, mixed them, and make the song ready for the release. The money will help us to continue with our journey. So we can continue our journey, discover new artists, and help them on their artistic way, and create more content for you, like videos like this. Also, what's really important for me is, you can send in your feedback and your questions, and we will discuss them two times per month in a YouTube live stream. Like this, we can keep it interactive and interesting. Today we will talk about the band Izuran Sahara, what means the roots of the Sahara. They are wonderful people from the city of M. Hamid El Ghislan. It's the last city before the big desert in Morocco starts. And we had a fantastic time together. We met Isra and Sahara during our time in the desert. And what started as a short-term collaboration became a big new friendship and a long-time project. The cool thing is, after we record together, I always offer my help to show how to set up Spotify, how to reach out to more people and share the story with the world. We brought them now to a small label, NYP Records. It's a non-profit label from DJ Tony Heinen from Belgium, where their song is getting sold now and go out to more and more people. The money that comes in is again spent for social projects. And this is the exchange I'm talking about. It's not just about traveling, make the music video and go back. It's about this project and how we work together and how our friendship just grow. We write almost every day and it's truly beautiful. 
We recorded the music video M. Hamid El Gizlan in the parents' traditional clay house, and it was quite a challenge to record there. Because the outside is made of clay, inside you have concrete, we had a very big room with big reverb and what started as a nightmare came out to be a perfect room for recording. It took a little bit more time and I will share my struggles and thought process later in the video. At first we had a long day, we started at 8 a.m. waking up, I had a coffee, at this time I was still drinking coffee, had a breakfast, we drove. 40 kilometers to the place with the band, started to unload the gear. All the gear is in my camping car, so I saw the place for the first time. And there it starts already to make the first calculation. Who are the band members? I didn't know the band before as well. I just met the manager and rhythm guitar player Ismail Kujut and Salah, the, the solo guitar player and vocalist. They are both brothers and fantastic people. Later the band came in and um, more people who also joined to play on the record as guest musicians from the band Generation Taragalt. When I see a place like this for the first time, I check it first for the acoustic. And to check for the acoustic, what I do, my, my trick is to make some small talk and listen rather on the reverberation walking through the room. Also, we have to check that the video is looking good. So this is actually the priority. And I have to figure out later how it will sound and how I can record it and later mix it in a professional way. We recorded bands with similar instruments. The tricky part is there are many instruments that you maybe don't know before, before recording. There are instruments like the calabas. It's a fruit that dries out and it looks like a half pumpkin. When it dries out, it's very, very hard. People use it to carry water, for example. And when you just cut it in the middle, put it on a pillow, you have a lot of low end there, as well as high end. And it's a perfect percussive instrument. So we unload the gear, we made a plan where to position the musicians, get a, get a better idea about the room, how it can serve me in the record, and also some troubleshooting. We recorded without the vocals. We just recorded the instrumental part. And for the recording, I usually take two or three takes. Everything is recorded without a click because the bands are already nervous and they, they're playing the traditional music that is traditionally played without a click at the fire. <laughs> After we had four takes of three songs, we made a break to, make, um, to get some video material for the music video. We wanted to make everything on one day so we packed the band into the camping car and drove to the desert. <laughs> we had a lot of fun during this time, uh, made some couple of shots went back to the Playing for Change music school just to stop by for another coffee. It was already evening and dark. We came back, I packed some more of the mics, checked how we will make the backing vocals and the overdubs for the vocals. Yeah, it went pretty late at 2 a.m. I was back in the camping car, the day is finished, everything was in the laptop, everybody is happy. <laughs> how they say in Morocco, cool she happy. Let's meet the band. We made a fantastic interview and we will switch during the interview to show you some more B-roll material and I will explain you a little bit more in depth about the recording process. Enjoy! The guys are really, really cool. Hey, what's up, Ismail? Labas, Kushi Mizien. How are you doing, man? Everything is good, bro. How are you doing? Oh, I'm doing amazing. Sitting here in my camper. Yeah, having a, I, I see, see you have a good time. Where, where are you now, man? We are in the desert next to our town in Mahamid. We are wow. sitting now in the, in the dunes, around the fire, and having uh, a good, good time with my band. Oh man, this is amazing. Can you introduce us to the band? Who are you? What are you doing? 
Yes. Uh, anyway, we are Izora Nasahara from Mahamid Al Ghazlan. It's a town in the southeast of Morocco. Uh, we are a traditional blues in the like a rock also band. The members of the band are different uh, tribes. We create that style to to show that even we are in from different tribes, we are one and we live in in peace also. Amazing! This is so beautiful, man. And where do you come from? Which country? Which city? We are in Morocco, exactly in a town, a small town in, like in the in the door to the Sahara, to the large desert called Mahamid Al Ghazlan. Mehamit I, I remember it's a very beautiful city. We really yeah. miss you guys. It was a incredible I, I time there. I also everyone to come to see our uh, our beautiful town, our beautiful Sahara, and our beautiful people also. Can you introduce us the band? Who is playing in the band? Who are yes. the guys beneath you? Okay, let's start with our jumpist. Here is our jumpist, Ayub. <laughs> He's from uh, a tribe called Arib. He is our percussion, exactly the Jambi. Amazing. Uh -huh. And here is Salah. He is from the Amazigh tribe. He is our lead guitar and the vocal also. Salam yeah, thank Salah. You. <laughs> and here is also Faisal. He uh, is from the Arab tribe also. He is our percussionist also. He played on the Jambi and on the Calabas. Hey, salam Faisal. Salam. Uh, and then he is uh, Yasin. Hello. Yasin is our bassist. He is uh, the, the guitar player on the bass. And uh, he is from the, uh, the, the Amazigh tribe also. Yes, and I'm happy to share that moment with you and with uh, everybody. And thank you so much about everything. Thank you, Yasid. Ten minutes. Who are you? <laughs> and this is thank you. our rhythmic guitar, Ismail, uh, from uh, from Mohammed also. Amazigh tribe. Amazigh tribe. Amazigh tribes. Your brothers, right? right. Yes, we are yes, brothers. We are yeah. brothers. Even we are all brothers here. <laughs> there is no difference between us. Koya, and tell me what kind yeah. of music you are playing. Uh, we are playing the, the blues uh, rock of the desert. We blues are using rock. our traditional, traditional songs from our tribes. And then we use our touch in the music the blues touch and sometimes also the rock touch to uh, to get uh, to give a new style to the world yeah. Yeah, after we record it I, I think this is a very unique style i really like what you're doing with the thank modern you, touch sir. it's thank amazing you, thank you. yes thank you it's because of you thank you uh, thank you guys we, we just finished the recording and mixes actually the mastering yeah. for your debut album and you're already working yeah. on new songs right Yes, yes. It was it was a good, good, good uh, uh, recording session with you. Thank yes, you so much. Fantastic one. Yeah, I had also a lot of lot of fun there, and I learned a lot during the session. This is this is just because we made this beautiful space together where everybody could create, and we just pushed each other to make the best out of it. Yeah, the best record, and just have a good time, enjoy the process. It was long. Yeah, we recorded until. One in the morning, I think. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and, the, and the second session was by almost 50 degrees. Yeah. And we really made the best out of it. It was a, it was a lot of fun. <laughs> 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 it was a crazy ride, actually, yeah. Yeah, it, yeah. It was beautiful. That, that's what makes it makes it more uh, beautiful and more like creative and different. You know, you know what I mean. Yeah, this beautiful exchange. I can I can't forget also your solo. <laughs> amazing, amazing one. 
Thank you. Thank um, you. Yeah, there, there will be one track with uh, yeah. where you had the idea to to put the more rock guitar solo to it. So I just help the guys to. I'm honored to be on your record, man. This is yes. this, this is just just perfect, and you are even so kind to put our logo from the studio in front of your record. So yeah, I really deserve, appreciate. It. Yes, you you deserve everything, and we, should, we, we couldn't do we couldn't we do that without you. Man, you're we, you're too kind. And yes. this, from from day one when we met, you're always so kind. It's incredible. Yes. Just we sent you a lot of love to the desert, man. Please tell me. Which yeah. music is your biggest inspiration? Uh, exactly uh, from the 2009 and the festival of Taragalt, a big festival here in our town, in Mohammed. Uh, a famous band from Mali comes to here to play called Tina Rewin. Oh. So from that day when we saw that, that new color, that new style for us. Even we are uh, in tradition, we are like so near, we are the same, but we didn't see uh, like a bass, bass on the, on the, on the music. And also like the Jambi, it's something new for us here because the Jambi is from the, the other African countries. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. We like that style. And then we have that idea that we have to do like, to, to get some some instruments from them and then add our instruments and mm -hmm. take our touch. Wow. So we like that Tinari one. And then after we figured out uh, like Bombino. Oh, yeah. Yes, it's a rock one, rock, mm -hmm. uh, blue, uh, rock and blues band from the Niger. Mm -hmm. And also a band from Mali called Tammy Christ. Oh. Uh, I love Tammy Crest. Yeah, our our big uh, inspiration. Wow, that's a nice pick. I, I would recommend to everybody to have a listen to the to the music. Tina Riwen is, I think, the number one Tuareg band. Yes, uh, yes, absolutely. They are the, yeah. the, the number one. Number one, and then Bombino in his unique guitar style. Yeah. I think he was also Grammy nominated this year or last year. By yes, the way. Yes. Rest in peace for his uh, rhythm guitar player. We heard the sad news yeah. yesterday. Our yeah. brother so, Elias. Elias passed away. Yeah. Yes, yes. Mm. It's a a bad and a big, big, also big loss to, to the music and to that band and to their uh, fans and lovers. So it was a bad news. Yeah, really bad news. Uh, peace. Sad day. Yes. Yeah, and the third pick, Tammy Crest, is it have this modern touch, and I, I yes, yes. really enjoy this music. So <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. I hope uh, the the listener, the viewer, will take the time and check out those bands. They are incredible. I hope we can put it down there in the credits. And yeah, yes, So tell me, what are your songs about? What is the main idea about your songs? What is the message you want to spread with your music? Yes. Uh... As I told you, in our band, we are not from one tribe. Here in our band, there is uh, members from Amazir tribe and the others from the Arab tribe. So we create that color to show that even we are different, but we live in peace and love here. Mm -hmm. All the tribes, yes, all the tribes respect each other. This is beautiful. This is a wonderful yes. message. Yeah, and also uh, because, as you know, here and you saw that in our town, the climate change. Mm -hmm. This is a big, big problem for for the the people here and the, for the nomad nomads outside in the desert. Yeah. Yes, we 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 lose uh, our plants, our grease, no our water. So. The life here, the, the the lifestyle is have changed a lot to the bad, not not to the good. 
good sight. It's hard and for the animals yes. and the people also. Yes, and it's hard for the animal animals and also for the people. Mm -hmm. So uh, the we have that that message to the government or to the responsible people to do some solution. I thought I totally get it because it was in a short amount of time, like in the last ten years or fifteen years, yes, yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And we want we want we want to to share that message to the with the people around the world. And why not to go to to play our uh, music in the festivals in other cities to meet mm -hmm. people and to exchange our culture with them and uh, discovering many yeah, things. Yeah, definitely. To discover definitely. many things, in, uh, many other cultures. And there was a big change in the last 10, 15 years. There was still yeah. water and the pipes were growing. You had a lot of dates, and now it's just dry. It's really we we even went in summer to see how hot it really gets. And it was 50 degrees during the day and 45, yes. 45 at night. That, and that's it. <laughs> 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 and this is our message. We want a solution. Yeah, yes. definitely. To the people around the world, not just in Morocco or and also yeah. around the world. So it looks great. And, our, uh, and also our message, it's for the the people who love the desert and uh, uh, everything uh, around the desert, it's like making the associations for avoiding the problems of the water and, uh, for example, searching about some solution for uh, for living and uh, living a nice life also here and and uh, something like that it will be nice also. Tell me, wh wh when does your album come come out? Uh, we just finished the whole album. The album, uh, there is eight songs on the album. Mm -hmm. We early day, uh, uh, share uh, the first song is Mohammed Al Ghazlan, and also uh, the video clip that you and Cassia did. And we are planning to to share uh, uh, the rest songs uh, soon, but. Not in directly the the seven songs same in same uh, yeah in the same time. Ah, okay. So you release one after the other, right? Yeah, yeah. it would stay. be I think better. <laughs> As you like, amazing, amazing, great yeah. idea. And you put them on Spotify or where where will be? Where can people listen to your music? We'll put them first in on YouTube, and after a while. Just like days, three or four days, we will put them on the, the platforms like Spotify, SoundCloud, uh, iTunes, and Deezer also. Oh, amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Looking forward for it. I wish you a lot of success with it. <laughs> Thank, you so much. Thank you. You Thank too. You, so much. you make really beautiful music and uh, very versatile. The album has a lot of different tracks there. They were recorded in three different places. We recorded I think five of the songs and three were recorded in another studio. And yeah, I, I, I was really happy that, that I could mix all of the tracks and master them as well. So yeah, yeah exciting times for your <laughs> debut album. What, what are yes. your plans for the future with the band? We have like a dream to, to, to share our, our message to the world in their countries, not just from YouTube or the platform. Mm -hmm. We have to meet people. We want to meet people. Oh. So uh, we wish to go to, to the festivals around the world and then people uh, can see us in live and also can hear our music. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah. And uh, you're the manager of the band also, right? Yes, I'm trying to do my best. <laughs> <laughs> you took the responsibility. You make it really good. So with yeah, uh, thank you. Yeah, it's you amazing. help me a lot in many, many subs. Let's jump into the project file. Um, let's talk a little bit about the microphones and the mic choices, why I use them and the thought process behind it. I will share a nice technique for you to achieve wider mixes. Um, you can try it out at home as well. It's a really cool technique. Sometimes I use it, sometimes not. Here it was perfect. This is the project file. Let's have a listen at first. 
I think it's a smooth and balanced mix. Um, I had to take off a little bit of the processing because it takes too much CPU. Usually when I start a project, I check in which order I want to mix it. Basically, I start with the rhythm section, then I go to the bass, then to the vocals, then to the guitars or keyboards or whatever is in the mix. So here we have the percussion section. Let's have a listen here. So you hear a lot of bleed and this is because we are recording everything live. Everything is live recorded. So what is tricky there? What, what uh, for issues I, I encountered? When I chose the microphones, I chose too much condenser mics. When you're recording live in a situation like this, in a reverberant room like this, you will get a lot of bleed and a condenser mic will pick up everything. So you will not get the clarity from the one instrument you want to record, let's say the Jambi. You will get the full room into the microphone. So the best thing is to have a good mic locker with dynamic microphones. Because they are working in a cardioid pattern. And the cardioid pattern will just cancel out what comes from behind of the microphone. So let's, let, let's see here. When I have the percussion, the Jambi, the Jambi got one SM57 microphone on the top to get more of the skin and the hits and the splash there. And the rest is cancelled out from the background as good as possible. For the Jambi I use usually two microphones, one facing on the top on the skin and one, this I found out after several sessions, I thought the best bass sound is at the back of the pipe from the Jambi. And I use usually something like an AKG D112, like a kick, kick drum mic, to get the best of the low end there. But the low end is very, very undefined when you put it at the hole. So my new technique that I also used here is to put the microphone in front of the Jambi, pointing downwards, but in front of the wood. So I split the Jambi in three parts and on the one third I point the microphone and later when I need more bass I do it artificially with the R bass. This sounds way cleaner and is more effective. Like this when I blend them together you have something like this. For me in general I like bleed because when you have the right amount of bleed and this you have to check before recording. With the right amount of bleed, the sound, the track will sound way more complete, like a unit. So then I have the color bus, and the color bus was tricky. Because between all the loud elements, between the electric guitar, be between the bass, between the jambi, the jambi player was playing heavily with it. The small color bus will go down. So this is always the biggest challenge. Nowadays, I record tracks like this without the color bus and just overdub it later to have more control. But here, let's have a listen what's going on. So I really had to push it and um, push the low end. What I did here actually is parallel distortion that I love with the Trash 2 I'm using here. Like this I get way more clarity out of it and have way more control. But I have to clean a lot there because the biggest problem is the bass. Even when we put the bass in another room, I couldn't record the band with headphones. So, because we don't have enough headphones here for everybody and my laptop wouldn't take the processing power. The band is literally playing live. And I have to find the balance during the recording process that 
everybody can hear every instrument, but the instruments are not too loud. So you have to find a critical point on the bass because the bass waves, they are the longest and they will be on every single mic. Later you have to cut it in the mix. There is no way around. To get a tight low end, you have to make space for the low end and just bring the bass element there and just bring the percussion elements there. So everything will sit tight in your mix. For more about the tight low end, Warren Heward have excellent free tutorials, five tips, how to clean up your low end. I totally recommend it to you. For the next mics, I had two room percussion mics. So I'm using two audio interfaces and make them as an aggregate device on my Mac means virtually they will work like one device. So I have two interfaces with eight inputs and in my laptop I can use both of them together. I have 16 inputs and I wanted to try something. So I used my Rode NT5, um, small condenser diaphragm microphones in 120 degrees and put one to the color bus and one to the Jambi. There it was also very important how I place the band and position position the bands and the instruments together, how I, how I want to record them. So I put the color bus on one side and on the opposite, I put the Jambi so they are not in their way. If they would be close to each other, all the heavy Jambi hits would take a lot of space from the color bus. Like this, I could get a way cleaner sound. And in the middle of both of them, to glue them a little bit more together, I put these room mics in 120 degrees. Just to emphasize the hits a little bit, have something for a little bit more deepness in the track. The next one is the bass. And the bass, the bass player was really, really good. And I usually take the DI signal, means a cable goes into the DI box, from the DI box directly in my audio interface, and the second cable, you can split the signal, the link goes into the bass amplifier, and in front of the bass amplifier I usually have the AKG D112 mic, like a really good mic for tight low end. Let's have a listen to the bass here. You would say it sounds a little bit um, honky. There is a lot of higher mids there. I put the focus on 5K because as I, as I said, all the low end will be in every single mic. So it will add up during the track. So I don't have to put too much low end here. They wanted more clarity because he's playing a lot of notes there. So if I have too much low end, it would get very, very muddy. Anyway, let's move on to the vocals and for the vocals, Faisal was singing and for the vocals I usually use a condenser mic in the overdubs, overdubbing session I use the SE Electronics X1. It is perfect for me, working really really good. Let's check the guitars. Me as a guitar player since 21 years I love this topic and this was really really tricky. This record was again for exchange to just support the band. As I exchange also I take more time to experiment with the microphones and improve my skills. This is how I could learn. I wanted to test my rim mic on the guitars. Usually when I have a very high end source with a lot of top end, I try to use a DACA microphone to even it out. Because I can push the high end, I try to get the best sound possible already in the DAW. But there are many factors that, that I have to think about due to my limitations. And what I mean is when I have two audio interfaces, I can put the 48 volt for four inputs at the same time. When I put now a dynamic mic on one of those four inputs, there is a big possibility for noise from the phantom, phantom power. So I really have to think about this. And when you put the ribbon mic into a 48 volt source, it can happen that it breaks. So after all the experimenting, at the end I, I found a spot, I found a slot, for the for the ribbon mic and I checked 
I thought this would be perfect. I put the guitar amplifier into the corner. It was literally a 15 watt small Fender amplifier. I thought I put the rim mic there and get a really killer sound. The other guitar was in the other corner. Please. So for the, for the lead guitar, I used the Sennheiser Sennheiser S609. It's a perfect mic that you can hang. It don't need a mic stand, what is very practically for me. The other guitar at first had the ribbon mic there, but all the jambe hits were building up in the corner. So I had a lot of noise. I couldn't even hear the guitar in the, in the tracks. This was really, really crazy. So we had to find a solution. And I watched one of those videos with Evil Joe Barassi, one of my favorite engineers because he made uh, my favorite albums with Monster Magnet, Volbeat, uh, Slipknot, Tool, whatever. Whatever he was touching, I, I, I'm always fascinated. Queens of the Stone Age, of course. And I watched this video how they made Lullabies in Paradise and saw that they put the guitar amplifier into a fridge. I wanted to try it as well. <laughs> they had the old fridge in another room and I switched the mic to a SM57 again. It will always work on the guitar. We put the guitar into the fridge, put the mic there. I listened, it was a superb sound, but the problem was, and I didn't talk about it again. It was in another room and nobody could hear the rhythm guitar, not even the rhythm guitar player. Because I didn't have headphones, we had to bring the amplifier again back to the room but that it get at less, as less bleed as possible. The solution was to put it in between the door. There was a door that opens like this. So we closed one part, opened the other part and put the guitar amplifier in between it. So a little bit of sound came to the rhythm guitar player and I could put the SM57 there and get the yeah, good sound out of it. Let's check it out. And you hear there is no bleed. So this was, this was really tricky, but a very good experience. The next one, this is what I want to talk about with you. These are my MS mics. MS stands for mid-side. This is a recording technique that I enjoy. I, I really, really love to use it. I will show you how it sounds here. So it sounds very wide. I use them as room mics. How you set it up is basically you have one microphone in the middle in cardioid form, a condenser mic or a tube mic. I used my tube mic here and another mic on top of it in figure eight. So you put the cardioid mic in front of the sound source, cancelling out the sound from the back. And on top of it, you put the figure eight that will take only the sides. The figure, figure eight microphone will cancel out the sound in the middle and take it only from the sides. And later in the mix, you hard pan the figure eight mics, hard left, hard right. I use the Audio Technica 2050 and you flip the face of one side. Let's have a listen how it sounds without processing. Nothing special for now. Now let's flip the face of one of them. I take the right side. And this sounds very phasey, unpleasant, something is missing in the middle. So check out how it glues together when I bring in the middle mic.
important when you use this technique I try to blend it in a little bit, just a little bit into the mix, into the final mix, to glue it together and make it wider. Always check it with a phase correlation meter that you are still in phase, because phase issues can happen very, very quickly here. And last but not least are the backing vocals. And for the backing vocals, I place them in this big room. I went crazy. They were tired already, but they trusted me. And I put one guy on the right side, one on the left, one on the opposite, like very close, and one far away, like, you know, like in a square. Everybody got his own mic, and I put my tube mic in the middle to glue them at the end together. Check it out how it sounds like here. And that's it with the microphone choices. If you want to learn more about it, there will be a Promix Academy course where we go in depth into the song, how I mixed it, why I did all the EQ moves. And I think you can learn a lot there from, from this process. Let's go back to the interview and learn a little bit more about the songs from Izuran and Sahara. Yeah. What, what, what are you going to do today? Uh, now, yes, after a few minutes, we are going to play some of our music. And we will have dinner together. About yes, and uh, trying to to improve our skills. Amazing! Thank you so much for your time. You are welcome, Adrian. You're Thank welcome. you so much. I appreciate your work and your kindness and your uh, help. Also, your advices. We we will will not and we won't forget that. Thank you so much for us. Also, we. This time is special in our heart because it, it, it is such a beautiful place to be there and uh, the people are just wonderful. It was hard yeah. to leave. Yeah, it was really hard to leave. We spent two months in the desert and um, we went to the dunes of Chicago and also when, yeah. when we went for making the music video just to the desert, it's so quiet and you can really come to yourself. Oh, there it is, the fire. <laughs> Fire. 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 Beautiful. <laughs> Guys, Shukra and Tenmirt, we wish you all the best and all the success. I hope to see you, you also you. on international Thank stages. You. Thank, you so Thank, much. You so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And I, I hope we can put the contact information there. Check out the band on uh, Facebook, on Instagram. Uh, check out the music video that we created, M. Hamid Agizlan. And, and yeah, stay tuned for more. The guys are just starting now. <laughs> Inshallah. 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 Thank you. Take care, guys. Thank you. So let's go and check my three favorite tracks from the album and have a first listen to the album from Izran and Sahara.
have a message to the whole uh, singers or artists in the groups also bands to to ask for you because we we are very very appreciate your work with us and because you are so helpful you in Cassia helpful and the kindness your kindness is I, I can't see how how much it's illimited thank you so much man really yeah. appreciate it we had really this was this was a very special time with you guys in the desert and it becomes a family <laughs> visit us yeah. again because uh, we are working for a new songs inshallah coming soon oh i like i like what i hear <laughs> Yeah, this is so amazing. Wow, that's a really exciting process and I want to thank you for watching this video, for supporting the bands. I really hope that you enjoy this video series. It, it is a crazy experience and the most important thing is I hope that you learned a little bit more about the culture in Morocco, about the desert. Maybe you want to visit it. If you want to go there, if you want to travel, feel free to ask me. My secret hobby is to be a tour guide <laughs> and recommend places. So yeah, feel free to ask me anything about it. I'm more than happy to share my experience with you. I want to thank Juan Hewitt and the whole Produce Like a Pro team, Produce Like a Pro Academy also for this incredible opportunity and great partnership. It's a lot of fun and I'm happy to see that this years of work and sleepless nights will go out to more people now and can even help somebody. <laughs> it's incredible. By the way, if you want to help our project, it's very, very easy. Check us out on YouTube, hit the subscribe button and check out the latest videos. We made the Hit The Road Music Studio playlist where you got all the videos, all the music videos. You can discover new music, hopefully learn something from other cultures and just grow your musical wisdom. <laughs> Thank you very much for your support. Check us out as well on Facebook and on Instagram. It always helps when you share our videos, if you share our content, not only on social media, but also in real life. Show it to your parents, show it to your best friends, tell it to the guy at the gas station, tell him there is some guy in a camping car traveling and recording, check out what he's doing. We try to put subtitles in almost every song as soon as it's possible when there is a translation available, usually in English, German and Polish. If you have any, any, any questions, let me know in the comment section. I will scan it once per day for 30 minutes and will answer you as good as possible. So one more time, thank you very much for your support. I hope I can make more of these videos and show you live situations, how we are recording. The next record session will be with Zegra Band in Morocco before we will leave this beautiful country. So stay tuned for more and have an incredible, marvelous day. All the best. Thank you very much. You rock. Do you see this? It's for you. <laughs>